News 8 at 5 starts now. I've directed an immediate suspension of amphibious assault vehicle water operations until the causal factors of this mishap are better understood. A training tragedy off San Clemente Island leaves one Camp Pendleton Marine dead and eight other service members missing. Good evening and thanks for joining us tonight. I'm Barbara Lee Edwards. And I'm Marcella Lee in tonight for Carlo Chiquetto. This happened on Thursday during a training accident involving an amphibious assault vehicle near San Clemente Island. Two Marines remain hospitalized. The search for the seven missing Marines and one sailor continues tonight. News 8's Heather Hope has the very latest. It was uh, quite a distance before, you know, it was noticed that they were in trouble. Over 1,000 meters offshore on San Clemente Island, Marine Corps officials say yesterday at 5 5.45 p.m., an AAV, or amphibious assault vehicle, weighing 26 tons, took in too much water and sank with 16 service members on board. Five were rescued. One Marine with the 15th Marine Expeditionary Unit was taken to Scripps Memorial Hospital in La Jolla, where he died. And the search continues for seven Marines and one sailor off the coast. The AAV is actually in several hundred feet of water. It's uh, really below the depth that a diver can go to. The service members were on their way from the island back out to the ship when tragedy occurred. They were basically completing training. They had already come ashore. The accident happened during a routine training exercise. Here is some footage from Camp Pendleton's amphibious assault file in August 2019 of Marines performing a vehicle landing at Red Beach on base, where about 3,000 Navy Marine Corps personnel did a joint training exercise testing logistics capabilities. Today, officials ordered a direct suspension of operation of amphibious assault vehicles due to the deadly accident. Amtrak units can continue to train ashore. We'll just wait until we have a better picture of what caused this, and then we'll make a second decision. Search efforts are ongoing to recover the remaining eight missing. Officials say they have an inventory of 800 AAVs with two accidents in the last 25 years. Back in 2017, 15 Marines were hurt, six critically in an accident at Camp Pendleton with an amphibious vehicle they were training in caught fire back in September 2017. These vehicles have been used since the 1970s. Then after the investigation is done, we'll see, as always, if there are any trans Again, officials have not released the name of the Marine who died or the others who were involved in yesterday's deadly tragedy. Again, that search continues just north of us in San Clemente Island, the Marine group involved based here at Camp Pendleton. Barbara Lee. All right, Heather, thank you. San Clemente Island, by the way, is 78 miles off the coast of Camp Pendleton. Some of the water is very shallow, but there is a steep underwater cliff that drops to 4,400 feet deep. This afternoon, the military confirmed the craft is on the ocean floor about 700 feet down. Please stay with News 8 for the very latest information on this developing story. We'll continue to follow it on our digital platforms, including CBS8.com, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube. We are ending the month with some real July fry with increased temperatures and increased discomfort, especially for people inland, but also for those along the coast. Everywhere. News 8's Monique Grego has more on the incoming heat wave, who it affects, and of course, the fire danger. And if you went outside walking today, you probably noticed just how much warmer it is, which is great for San Diego weather, but that can also cause a lot of other issues. As things start warming up in San Diego this summer, some of us feeling it more than others. I tell you one thing, this San Diego heat is really killing us. <laughs> Andrew Charlumbus is a mechanic at AG Auto and Truck on First Street in El Cajon. Just because of the heat, we've been, you know, cutting our days a little bit short. We've been starting, you know, earlier, starting at 6 a.m. and working till 3. The upcoming heat wave, not a surprise for most San Diegans, but still, well, yeah, it's going to get hot. Try to get in the shade as much as you can. Stay out of that heat, avoid the sunstroke. But of course, it isn't just mechanics on alert. As we move into the summer, we see these hotter, drier days. We know that these fires have the potential to get larger and more devastating. Thomas Schutz from Cal Fire San Diego knows as things dry out, the risk for large fires ramps up. And most of them caused by humans. A lot of times it's unintentional. People are, are uh, just out living their lives, uh, even trying to do the right thing, like clear their defensible space and 
their mower hits a rock and then um, these fires are off to the races. Things are drying out and history shows what can happen. We do know that once we have multiple incidents going at the same time, the abundance of resources starts to diminish and we really, uh, that's when it really becomes a challenge. Fire season, just another issue added on to all the other things people are dealing with during the pandemic. COVID is not helping very much at all. Tough to wear the mask and, and, and work in the hot sun. Despite his working conditions, Charles Lumbus not letting that get him down. Life is good. That's what we want to hear. Life is good. We like the sun. We'll take as much of it as we can. And if you did have a previous escape plan, if a brush fire were to break out in your neighborhood, Cal Fire says that may have changed due to COVID-19 or the coronavirus. So you may want to make a new one and just get set just in case anything happens. Monique Griego, News 8. All right, Monique, thanks. A heat advisory remains in effect until 9 o'clock tomorrow night. So just how hot will it be to start our weekend? Chief Meteorologist Carlene Chavis has a first look at your microclimate forecast. It is hot out there, Carlene. <laughs> yeah, it is, Marcella. We're definitely feeling the heat for today, even closer towards the coast. So along the coast, temperatures warmed above seasonal. And by the weekend, we're still looking at this heat sticking around. Taking a look with highs for tomorrow, we have 90s that are going to take over, as well as still some triple-digit heat. 103 is forecast for tomorrow for Campo, as well as 116 for the desert. You're seeing right along the coast, we're still going to see some spots in the 80s, as well as the 70s, just not as warm as the rest of the county. As Marcella mentioned, we still have that heat advisory in play all the way until tomorrow night at 9 p.m. Highs up to 102 for the mountains. Highs could get up to 104 for the inland valleys. Still in play as well as that excessive heat warning for the desert with highs near 120 expected through tomorrow night. So we're not done with the heat just yet. And just a few tips to send you on your way. Keep in mind wearing a lightweight, loose fitted clothing is good as well as drinking plenty of water and avoid those uh, afternoon hours with your exercises. We'll go ahead and take a look at your complete forecast coming up. Back to you, Marcella. Thirteen more community outbreaks linked to COVID-19 are being reported in San Diego County tonight. That makes 38 outbreaks over the past seven days, which is way above the county's trigger of seven. A community outbreak is defined as three or more COVID-19 cases in a setting and in people of different households. There are 380 newly confirmed cases of COVID-19 in the county out of more than 9,000 tests. That's a positive rate of 4.2% and that is below the 14-day rolling average of 5.4%. That number continues to trend downwards. There are now more than 29,000 cases. Nearly 22,000 have recovered. Three deaths bring that total to 561. President Trump visited Florida today to discuss how to handle the coronavirus pandemic as a hurricane approaches. The trip comes as top health experts testified on Capitol Hill and stimulus talks remain at a stalemate. Skylar Henry has more from the White House. With storm warnings and watches up for Florida's Atlantic coast, President Trump touched down in Tampa to discuss how to deal with Hurricane Isaias in the midst of the coronavirus pandemic. I ask all of those in the path of the storm to follow the guidance of your state, local, and tribal officials. Normally, you might evacuate. This time, more advice is going to focus on sheltering in place. Earlier in the day, President Trump tweeted his criticism of Democrats for questioning America's coronavirus testing capabilities, even as his testing czar acknowledged real problems with the system. Would it be possible for our nation to have results for all COVID tests completed and returned within 48 and 72 hours? It is not a possible benchmark we can achieve today, given the demand and the supply. At the same hearing Friday, Congressman Jim Jordan pushed Dr. Anthony Fauci to say protests should be shut down after the infectious disease expert said crowds helped spread the virus. I said crowds. I didn't say specifically. I didn't say protests do anything. So the protests don't increase the spread of the virus? I didn't say that. You're putting words in my mouth. Fighting between the White House and Congress has so far prevented a deal on a new coronavirus relief package. It is a disgrace that they're not negotiating. But they're only looking to play a political game. I happen to think it's a bad political game. I think it hurts them. House Speaker Nancy Pelosi says it's not a game. We want to help the America's family, working families, and they want to give tax cuts to the biggest, the richest people. Why can't they come to agreement? We don't have shared values. That's just the way it is. So it's not bickering. It's standing our ground. Millions of Americans on unemployment are losing their extra $600 a week in federal benefits as of today. 
Skyler Henry, CBS News, the White House. Today, family, friends, and colleagues paid tribute to a San Diego fire engineer who died while off-duty earlier this month in a tragic crash. Dozens of people gathered in Mission Bay to honor Ryan Ferreira. The 39-year-old was killed in a motorcycle accident in East County. Those at the private memorial today say Ferreira had an unforgettable smile and a true love for life. People try their whole lives to truly live in the now and to be present. But Ryan never needed to try because that was the essence of him. And that is why so many people love him the way we do. Investigators say neither Ferreira nor the driver of the motorcycle was wearing a helmet. They also say alcohol is suspected in the crash. Ferreira had been with the San Diego Fire Rescue Department for 13 years. A big day in Encanto Village with the grand opening of 65 affordable apartments. Eight of those apartments will go to veterans who've experienced homelessness. The others are now home to low-income families. Those living there will have close access to schools, a park, and retail services. Encanto Village will also offer on-site services like after-school activities and classes in financial literacy, resume building, nutrition, and English as a second language. The San Diego Unified School District officially released its plans for distance learning this fall. That's coming up next tonight. Also, an in-depth look at this weekend's return of the SpaceX Dragon capsule after two months in space. Is everyone out? High drama in Pennsylvania as police officers rush to save a horse from a burning barn. Come on. 